Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I'm gonna continue doing the uh, plugs on the loom for my 911 engine. So before I get into things today, I need to backtrack a little bit on what I was doing uh, last time with this engine. Some of you guys noticed when I was putting this all together that I was actually missing something in behind the alternator in here. And uh, what that is, is this little thing here that looks a bit like a uh, like a Viking helmet. Um, this is actually a air deflector, and it helps to guide the uh, the air coming through from the fans evenly over the uh, the separate cylinders. Without this, um, I'd probably get uh, most of the air going in one direction over you know a couple of the cylinders, and the others would get quite hot. So I definitely need this thing, and this is actually where I uh, I will mention. Um, Go and check out Push Parts by Jeff. That's actually how I found this. Um, I didn't actually know you could still get these. I thought you could only get uh, sort of old secondhand ones, and I had people trying to sell me old rusty ones for more more than it cost to get the uh, this genuine Push Part in. Uh, after doing a quick search on Push Parts by Jeff, so it's well worth checking out pushpartsbyjeff.com. You compare your prices there, and there's uh, a bunch of our retailers have got some specials on there. So uh, get on there and check it out. Um, all right, so the first thing I'm going to do today is uh, pull this uh, fan back off again, this uh, fan housing, and reattach, or attach for the first time, this uh, air deflector. And uh, one of the reasons, by the way, that I didn't know I was missing it is because this engine never had it. Whoever rebuilt this engine before I rebuilt this engine before <laughs> I started never fitted one. Um, but I think that was one of the, that was pretty much the least of their problems with that rebuild. Anyway, uh, let's uh, pull this off and start trying to fit my air deflector. Okay, so I've got the air deflector installed on the engine now, which means I can finally start going through and finishing buttoning up the front of this engine. Now, the reason I hadn't finished it is obviously because I was waiting for that. Now it's done, um, I need to put the fan belt back on. This engine has an interesting way of how the fan belt is actually fitted. So it's got a pulley at the bottom here, obviously on the, um, it's the harmonic balancer of the engine. Um, at the top here, there's no actual pulley. Basically what you've got is you've just got this other plate that sits over here and depending on how many of these shims, you need six shims and you sort of juggle between putting some behind or some in front to make the, uh, the V of this plate and the fan housing bigger or smaller, and that uh, adjusts the tension of the belt. Basically, it's a bit of trial and error, but uh, by going backwards and forwards, I should be able to get the correct tension on the belt. Uh, apparently, what I'm looking for is, um, when you press the side of the belt, I should be looking for about 10 to 15 millimeters of uh, flex in the belt. If there's too much, that means that the, the gap is too high, which means I need to take some shims out from behind this plate. Uh, if it's not enough, then I need to add some more shims at the back. I'll, uh, I'll sort of go through it now and uh, you'll sort of see as it comes together roughly uh, how it actually works. And one more thing while I'm here, uh, one of you guys pointed out actually, is that uh, these clamps, somebody actually noticed that I've got them on up the wrong way, and uh, they hold on both ways, but when the exhaust is in the car, you can't get to the bolts when they're up this way, they should be that way, so I'm gonna take these off now, flip them around, and, uh, and remount them so that they're the right way around, and I can actually uh, play with it when it's in the car. Okay, so as you saw, I just went and uh, I painted the straps, and I've, I've also painted the, uh, my uh, engine brace, so uh, I'll leave that for now while that's drying, and head back over to, uh, 
to my loom and let's continue putting on the plugs now for all of the coil packs. I've got them here, Raceworks supplied all the, uh, the, the plugs and everything for the coil packs as well, and, and the coil packs, but uh, yeah, having, having all the right plugs and, and everything works out really well. So I'm gonna go around, tape up all of these uh, ends now, tape them so they can hold all of this expanding mesh nice and tight, and then I can start sliding on my um, little sections of clear heat shrink and uh, and the, the little covers and everything so that it's all gonna be nice and neat and tidy. Let's uh, get into it. Okay, so all my plugs are on now, or the, the uh, upper range of plugs all uh, labelled and, uh, and ready to go. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just gonna get some of these uh, basic sort of P-clips, super cheap P-clips, um, and uh, bolt them down to the, the bolts holding down the fiberglass cover. That will just give me a nice, neat, finished, tidy look so that the, uh, the loom is all tucked away nice and neat. Very slow and tedious, but that's one side down, one side to go. Well, that is really time consuming, but the coils are all done, so um, I need to move on and uh, start putting all these sensors up, like the uh, TPS and uh, crank angle and uh, some of these bits. So let's keep moving forward. One of the things I wanted to talk about that uh, was brought up last week, I was talking about the fact that on this engine, I couldn't get the factory oil pressure sensor to work with the ECU. Basically, from what I've found, um, the ECU requires a three wire uh, sensor for it to, to get an accurate reading. Uh, my sensor is a one wire type, which is an old uh, old style that, that came on this car. I didn't want to get rid of my factory one because I don't want a dead gauge in the car. I want the factory gauge to work the way it's supposed to. I don't want a modern digital dash in this car or anything like that. I know that they have great digital dashes now that can do everything, but I wanted to keep the classic look in the car. So I'm not going with that. So I was writing it off, but um, I was thinking about it further. And this car, um, I believe actually comes with two separate um, sensors for oil pressure. So you actually have up here, uh, we have the, uh, the oil pressure sensor right here, but then back here, this is actually an oil pressure switch, which I believe just gives you a low oil pressure light on the dash. Now, I am happy enough having a light that doesn't work on the dash. So I, what I'm thinking now is that I can probably remove this uh, switch from the system and, uh, and replace it with another sensor. Uh, that way I don't have to tap holes in the block. I don't have to try and put a T-piece in which can vibrate and snap in, at later dates or something like that. I don't need to do any of that. I can just replace this uh, switch with a, uh, another sensor and, uh, and that can run on the ECU. Not having the light is not going to be an issue if the ECU is controlling everything and looking after me. Um, that's, a, uh, that's, I think, the way I'm going to move forward. So I'll leave the, lot, the uh, wires of that. I've still got to get the sensor. Um, but uh, that's easy enough to add. It's, it's easy to get to on this engine, particularly as this is all open here. So uh, I can uh, keep moving on now. And uh, the next thing to wire up, I think will be the, my um, TPS. So after doing a bunch of these now, I found the best way uh, for me at least is to wrap the end of the expandable mesh first in just some, some tape. That holds it tight enough so that you can actually start sliding things over the top. Then I have my clear heat shrink, goes next. In this case, we've got the rubber sleeve, so that goes next. A little bit of WD-40 helps. Sleeve over. Now I can start putting my terminals on. I 
I find it's easier to start with the, uh, the pin held in the crimpers and then feed the wire into it and crimp it on that way. And then the most important part is to research and make sure you put the right pin in the right hole so that everybody, everything is wired in the right way. And print out my label. Trim it to size. Yeah. And there we have a nice, neat looking clip. Just need to clip it on and we're done. Now, same again for the uh, air temperature sensor and the knock sensor. Okay, so we're really getting there as far as wiring goes. Now we're moving forward. The, uh, the main things we have left are the crank angle sensor and the cam angle sensor and wideband oxygen sensors. We're getting close, we're getting really close. Okay, so it's looking really good. I just gotta do a little bit more research now on connecting up my crank angle sensor and my cam angle sensor because um, I believe that the Link ECU has a built-in um, resistor in the lines, whereas sometimes you have to actually put a resistor in when you're connecting up some of these things. I believe that's already done with the uh, internally with the ECU, so I don't have to do that, but I need to just confirm the wiring for them as I only have two wires and three plugs. So um, a lot of it, this is just going through, making sure I'm plugging everything into the right plugs. That's That's... Vital, obviously. Um, but I'm really happy with how the looms come out. I think it's great. So I just got to track down that uh, all pressure sensor and uh, and there's a couple of plugs I still need. But we're pretty much done on the wiring loom, which is great. At least on this part of it. I still have to get it into the car and um, I'll show you what I'm doing as far as that goes next week. Um, so uh, as always, Check out uh, Porsche Parts by Jeff. If you need any Porsche Parts, always compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. Help us out on Patreon if you, uh, if you feel the, uh, the urge, if you like what we're doing here and want to support it. And uh, you can always follow me on Facebook and Instagram. All right, guys. See you next time.